Welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're going to catch up on what's new in Reaper 6.19, as well as uh, from the smaller updates 6.17 and 6.18. There's a couple of little things that I want to catch up on first. If you're not subscribed, please do that. I think about 65% of you watching actually aren't subscribed yet. So be sure to subscribe and really help out everyone. So in the 6.17 update, which came out just a few days after the 6.16 update that I did do a video on, we have the addition of finer control for pitch and rate knobs in the Media Explorer. And when you make a fine pitch adjustment, it's going to keep that when you switch to the regular adjustment. So I have a sound here in the Media Explorer. I'm going to adjust the pitch. I'm going to go up by 0.6 by holding down Shift. I have my pitch shift range set to 12 semitones and the shift behavior set on semitones. So if I hold down shift, it's gonna to switch to continuous. So if I have it on 0.6, uh, then I adjust it in semitones by not holding on the shift key, it's going to stay at that 0.6. And if I go below, it's going to switch to 0.4 because it's the same amount plus or minus uh, in the opposite direction, so. Another new thing that I think is pretty interesting, disable DX scanning by default on new installations. So this is only for Windows and DX plugins are very old format. There's a few programs that use them. Um, some things I think like Nero CD burner would, uh, would install some DX plugins that wouldn't be compatible with, with Reaper. Um, but there were some other like virtual instruments and things that were available but no one was really using them. VST has taken over. VST3 is now the new standard. And so most people are using VST plugins. And if you have DX scanning turned on, it would just cause problems. So that's now disabled by default. And I think that's probably long overdue. And if you do want to actually enable that, if you do have DX plugins that you rely on, then it's going to be on uh, in the preferences under plugins, rewire slash DX. You can enable the plugins and enable scanning. You can also force scanning and rescanning. Now let's get into the version 6.18 updates. There's just one thing I thought was pretty interesting. They've improved startup scanning user interface, allowing cancel of long scans. If the scan takes longer than 10 seconds, you're going to get this pop-up window, which gives you this cancel button. Most days, most, most times when you're just installing one or two new plugins, uh, between st startups, you're not going to see this window pop up. If Reaper is stuck on installing some plugin or scanning some plugin, or you've, um, you know, something happens and it takes a long time to start up, there's this cancel button. So it'll just skip the VST scanning for that startup. Again, if it takes longer than 10 seconds. If it doesn't, you won't see this window. And now we're into changes from the 6.19 update. And again, most of these are Media Explorer updates, which is hard to complain about. It's been a long time since the Media Explorer has gotten any love. So 6.16 up to 6.19 has a ton of Media Explorer stuff, and it just keeps getting better and better with every update. So I appreciate it. So let's look at what's new. We're gonna start off with some of the visual appearance type things. They've added a refresh button and theme images for back, forward, up, and refresh. These four buttons at the top here, these are all new uh, image files for the themes. So everyone that is making a theme can adjust the look of these. If you wanna customize your own theme, you can do this. Uh, the first three buttons there were there before, but kind of in a different style and not adjustable in any way. And then there's a new refresh button. So if you're importing stuff into your audio files folder, instead of having to like go back to the folder or run a, an action to refresh the page, um, there's a refresh button here now. More on the appearance stuff, we now have a scroll bar. So I'm gonna play a thing here. I'm gonna use my mouse wheel to scroll in and now I can see the scroll bar here and I can drag it, move it around. It's wider and narrower, depending on your zoom level. Another new thing is this bar on the right side that adjusts the waveform peak height.
And that is just for the visual, so it doesn't affect the volume or anything like that. Super cool to have that. They've also added an option to hide these things. So just right click in any empty space here to bring up the options, go to show and then scroll bars on preview waveform. And that hides it back to how it was previously. This next thing is more of a workflow change. By default, pick up beat synced preview immediately with an option to wait for next measure to start. So if you have tempo match on, start on bar, autoplay on, these are going to work a little bit differently and kind of more musically than they did before. And as I mentioned from reading the changelog, there is this option. If, when start on bar enabled, wait for next measure to start preview. This is kind of the old way with the start on bar. It's gonna be silent until it reaches a bar line and then it'll start playing, but it'll play from the beginning. And now uh, with that option off, start on bar on, tempo match on, it's going to follow your project. It should play more instantly and on the beat. And I think it works pretty well. So I'll show you this. I'll just start building up a project uh, from samples. I'm just gonna start with this one here. And I'll import that, just hitting the enter key. All right, so we've got a project playing here. One. Uh, sound file so far. I'm just going to jump to another thing that I've selected in the Media Explorer. So that's playing in sync with what's already playing, and it instantly started. And if you look at the play position in the Media Explorer preview, um, you'll see that it's not always starting from the beginning. It's starting from somewhere in the middle, but in sync with my project. And that's actually a huge change. I didn't think it was working right at first, but it is, and it's a huge change. I was gonna, I'm gonna start importing these. So I'm just gonna hit enter. I'm going to loop that out. and go to the next sound file. Import that. And make sure my cursor's at the beginning because that's where I want it to go. Put my cursor back there and go into the next sound, which is this one. And I'll import that. Do I have this one in there already? I do. I'm gonna import this. So you can pretty much build up a loop now without stopping and keep your project running, auditioning different samples and loops. And it's just a much more fluid process than it was before. It doesn't, exactly follow like if you start up bar three in your project, it's not gonna automatically start in bar three of your loop, um, but it is going to, if it's like a little bit before the bar line, if it's on beat three, it's going to start on beat three, um, sometimes at the beginning, sometimes at the end, but it usually makes musical sense. Uh, always starting at beat one in your, in your preview when your music was on beat or bar five or something like that, so much better and uh, a great improvement. All right, so the next thing here is if options enabled, apply volume, pitch, rate adjustments when adding media to resample Matic 5000. All right, so we've got this kick sound here and in options, I've got um, apply preview, pitch, rate to inserted media items and apply preview volume to inserted media items. I'm just going to adjust the volume. So that's at minus eight. Let's increase the pit or the, the rate and lower the pitch. Let's take this sound and insert it into a sample player. And so I've got my sampler with the same settings. So I've got my pitch offset here, my volume. Not sure how rate applies. But, um, but yeah, those things are applied based on those settings. 
All right, so there's a few new things for columns and sorting in the Media Explorer. So we now have a temporary mark for files to track which ones have been played. So I'm just gonna jump to another library here and it's this mark column. So if I press play on any of these, you can see the little dot goes into that column. And so I can instantly see which ones I played and which ones I haven't played. So I don't end up playing the same one repeatedly. And these marks clear when you go to another folder. So that's cleared again. We now have columns for sample rate, channel count, bit depth, or bit rate. We also have a new column for start offset. I've already scanned this folder for metadata. And um, if you have databases already created, you just need to rescan them. Have the channel count. We have the length of the file. Did I mention that one? That one's also new. Sample rate and bit depth. So if you have any sounds in your library that are 48K and 44.1, then you can now sort them that way. So doing this, I've got all my 48K files at the top. So I'll show you now how to update an existing database with this new metadata or the, to fill in the metadata into the new columns. With autoplay off, I'm gonna select all. I'm gonna right click and reread metadata from media files. And there will be a warning there if, if I've already made any changes like custom tags or anything like that. So a few seconds later, I've got uh, everything sorted here. I've got the length, I've got the channel count, sample rate, bit depth. Um, and if there was an offset, it's listed here as well. So a couple of them have ups offsets. This offset column is basically where it was recorded in the original DAW. Uh, you can also change that, so we'll look at that next. So I've imported the sound, and if I want to snap it to its original position, I go to item processing, and move items to source preferred position. And so originally it was recorded at 22 seconds into the project. So let's modify this. We'll just double click in here. We can press zero and that will change it to, to blank um, or we can double click, change this to Uh, one zero 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 zero, which I think will be one minute, if not one hour. So I'm going to right click here, write edited metadata to media files. So I'm going to import the new one into the project. And I'm going to, again, snap it to its original source or the source preferred position. And now it's over here at one hour. This is great for when you're recording sounds into Reaper, you wanna send it to someone else, you want them to be able to snap it to the exact position where they were recorded in their project, then yeah, you can do that. You could also add in an offset. So if you know their project starts at one hour and something, you can have your sounds offset by that. And when they snap it, it goes right into the correct time position. And then the last thing here, uh, if we're looking at a folder here, instead of a database. I don't know, I'll just go to the My Documents folder. And we have this option, if we right click, we can go to Group Folders at Top. So if this is unchecked, it's just gonna be alphabetical. We have the different things here, uh, Documents and Folders. And when Group Folders at Top is on, all the documents will be at the bottom. And then the last change is for subprojects. Embed subproject metadata in rendered.rpp-prox file. That's the temporary rendered file with the embedded Reaper document inside of it. Now metadata from the project will be into that file and then it can be read by things like SoundMiner. So if you have a lot of subprojects, if, if you're using subprojects in your workflow, you're using projects inside of projects, that sort of thing, being able to sort them through metadata is a great feature. And that's about it for these last three updates. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.